So here's the truth. Most companies don't want to give you something for free. It's crazy, right? There are definitely free website builders, but they often put limitations on free websites that might annoy you and maybe are designed to get you to sign up to a paid plan. The most common of these limitations is an ad. Most website builders have an ad somewhere on free websites. These ads range from pretty bad to actually pretty tolerable. This video will be a rapid tour of the top free website builders. I'll tell you which ones are great and which ones probably aren't worth your time. My work is supported by affiliate commissions. So if you'd like to try one of these website builders, you can find a link to them in the video description below and I might earn a commission. So let's start with Square Online. I think it's the best free website builder. And the biggest reason for this is they don't limit features. For example, Square includes tons of e-commerce features on free plans, unlimited products, appointment scheduling, curbside pickup, Apple Pay, digital products, Instagram shops, gift cards, shipping calculators, and a bunch more. Plus the credit card processing fee on free plans is the same fee you have on most paid plans. And they also provide customer support for free users, including phone support, which is kind of crazy. No other free website builder does that. Now overall, the Square website editor is simple and easy to use, but not super customizable. For example, you build pages by adding sections. Now within that section, you can toggle individual elements on or off, but you can't actually add any new elements. If you want more elements, you'd need to find a different section. Now Square does include an ad on free websites, but as you'll see later in the video, Square's ad is not nearly as bad as some of the other free website builders. It's a small ad in the footer of your website. So that's Square Online, my top choice for the best free website builder. The next three website builders I'll cover are also great, but they each have unique reasons for using them. First, Webflow. Webflow is what I'd recommend if you'd like to design your own theme from scratch. This is the editor, and this is a design I mocked up myself. It's not a template. The key thing to understand is that Webflow gives you the flexibility of front-end code without actually requiring you to know how to code. So we can adjust the padding on this heading tag. Or we can change the border radius on this button. Now web developers will recognize padding and border radius. These are both CSS properties. Webflow takes these code concepts and organizes them into an interface. The other great thing is that Webflow includes a CMS in the free plan. So in my CMS, I created a collection of articles. Each of these articles automatically gets their own page. That's pretty awesome. I will say Webflow has a learning curve. So understanding the fundamentals of web design will really help a lot here. Now finding Webflow's free plan is not super obvious. On the pricing page, scroll down to account plans and find the free starter plan. Then you're gonna to wanna to use the staging server. I asked Webflow to confirm that this was a free plan and yeah, you can choose this and they will host your website for free indefinitely. Now, if you do sign up for this plan, just know that Webflow includes a small ad that scrolls alongside your website. Card is the best website builder for one page websites, partly because they only focus on one page websites. So I often see personal websites and landing pages built with Card. Here we are in Card's editor. This is just a quick personal website I mocked up in Card. And if we move to the live version of this website, we'll see that if you scroll to the footer, you can find the ad that Card puts on free websites. And it's really, really small. Next up, Google Sites. Google Sites is 100% free. They don't even offer paid plans. I think there are two good reasons to use Google Sites. One, unlike Square, Webflow, and Card, Google Sites actually lets you add a custom domain name. So like yourwebsite.com. Now adding a custom domain name is not super easy. You will definitely need to learn about DNS. Adding a custom domain name is actually way easier with other website builders, but that's only if you're on their paid plans. The second reason to use Google Sites is that they include a very small ad. And honestly, ad's probably not even the right word here. It's more of a scrolling icon that the visitor has to hover for more information. 
Now there are some downsides to Google Sites. First of all, if you don't add a custom domain name, you'll be given a free subdomain, but as you can see here, it's awfully long. There's also only one Google Sites theme and it's pretty lame. Plus there aren't many customization options. You can't, for example, change the font and you can't actually change the layout. Text just spans the whole page. It can't be organized into columns. Overall, Google Sites probably isn't really for a small business. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it just might not be a perfect fit. Instead, I've actually noticed a lot of academics using Google Sites. Okay, things are going to speed up from here. I'm gonna quickly share two honorable mentions. These are free website builders that are just sort of, um, just okay. Ucraft. Like Google Sites, Ucraft lets you connect a domain name on their free plan. That's huge. But there are things I just don't love. For starters, people have complained to me that Ucraft funnels them to a paid trial when they are trying to sign up for a free plan. I don't exactly know what's going on here, but I've tried it myself and it's true. Sometimes I'm able to get a free plan and sometimes not. It's confusing. Also, Ucraft includes a big ad that scrolls along free websites. It's just too intrusive. Webnode. Webnode is a basic website builder with pretty great templates. And there's just a small ad on free websites. Unfortunately, Webnode limits free sites to one gigabyte of bandwidth. If you don't know, basically when visitors visit one of your pages, they consume your bandwidth. And one gigabyte of bandwidth doesn't get you very far. Now I'm gonna move even quicker through the free website builders I do not recommend. Wix. Wix includes a big ad that scrolls on top of free websites. And the subdomain they give free websites, it's too long. It's basically username.wixsite.com slash your website name. Finally, Wix has a 500 megabyte bandwidth limit, which is even lower than Webnode. GoDaddy. GoDaddy has a large ad that scrolls along free websites, and that's enough for me not to recommend them. Strikingly, it's kind of the same thing, really. Um, this ad is just too intrusive. WordPress.com. You guessed it. I just, I just think this ad is too intrusive. So there you go. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Like I said earlier in the video, my work is supported by affiliate commissions. So if you'd like to try one of these website builders, you can find a link to them in the video description below. And I might earn a commission. I update this video once a year, but website builders tend to experiment with their free plans and things can change fast. So let me know in the comments if you spot anything out of date. At any rate, thanks for watching.